Caleb thinks that Nico is going to win the Heisman next year. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and not let this get off the rails. No offense, Caleb, but you tend to do that. Uh, I, I want to ask you something more realistic. And Caleb may be right. And he's with this schedule. Josh may be able to win the Heisman next year. Uh, but what the H brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals, the Tennessee tradition? Rick Terry Jewelry.com. Rick Terry Jewelry.com. So I, this is completely in a theoretical sense. I understand they're not the same quarterback, although they're probably a little bit uh, more similar in their arm talent when I watch them. But certainly the guy that I'm getting ready to tell you about couldn't run at all. I think his shoelaces were tied together by Peyton Manning, who then in turn tied Peyton Manning's shoelaces together. But would you take Casey Clawson's career as Nico's, which I think we would define right now as Casey Clawson was a very, very good leader amidst a program that had some malcontents. He got to the SEC championship game. Wasn't his fault they didn't win it. There was a fumble by Dante Stallworth and a fumble by Travis Stevens that cost Tennessee a trip to play for the national championship. He was a road warrior. So if I told you, you get Casey Clawson's career, that level of success, that level of play, would you walk away from the craps table, go cash out at uh, at, the, at the at the cashing thing, whatever they call that, at, or would you say no? I'm gambling for more from Nico. Josh, let me ask you that question. I think very highly of Casey Clawson. I still think he's underrated historically when we talk about Tennessee football. But no, I would not cash out for that. I would attempt to accomplish more both individually and with the team. Statistically, it's difficult to make comparisons just because the offensive game, especially what the system is with Josh Heupel, is different. The running ability that Nico has will give him so many more rushing yards and rushing attempts than what Casey did. Uh, the, the, the one pause I would have immediately before saying no is that 2001 season because the 2001 season had Tennessee in a position uh, I do know the result, so that factors in when you ask me the question. But Tennessee was in a position to win an SEC title. Should have won it, honestly. And in that case, is playing for a national championship in a two-team playoff system. If we had a 12-team playoff in 2001, Tennessee's still in the playoff. So the results would be different then if we're using the system now. But I would still say I would look for more accomplishments for Nico individually and try to win more as a program with Nico over the next, what are we calling it? Two to three years. Okay. So I want to, I want to be clear. You're, you're, you're taking the risk that he, he could be a bust and everything that I've heard about him is that that's not going to be the case, but you're also taking the risk that he could be average like Jared Garantano. So you, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even toy with that. You wouldn't gamble with that. You would walk on out and cash your chips out. Uh, I would, no, I would uh, try to do more. Um, I think like I would if, too. Yeah. If, if Tennessee has Casey's team results over the next two seasons, no conference title. Again, the, the playoff thing's a little different. Um, like if they go to the play, let's say they even go to the playoff and they're one and done in the playoff in the next two years, and that's the end of Nico's run, then I think a lot of people are going to look at that as disappointing. If it's you know if it's ten and two, ten and two, playoff appearance, no playoff wins. I mean there will be disagreement there, but uh, if it's if it's oh one oh two oh three, let's say you have Nico for the next three seasons, because you're asking to take Casey's career. If it's oh one oh two oh three, and Tennessee has some nice regular season wins, but it doesn't have any championships. There's nothing substantial that Nico accomplishes where he's remembered outside the fan base for big time accomplishments. Then I think a lot of people will look at that as disappointing considering the wild amount of hype that exists as he takes over as the starter. Yeah. And it's funny, Josh, because you brought up 2001. If Tennessee with Nico was going to do what it did with Casey in 2001, 
wouldn't Nico have to be significantly better than Casey in that alone? Because whatever I like Casey too. I'm a fan of Casey and I think he's underrated, but that 2001 team had the greatest interior defensive line in the history of college football. And it had a hall of fame tight end. It had two starters at receiver in the NFL. I mean, that, that team was outside of the 97 or 98 team, maybe the most loaded team in Tennessee football history, talent wise. And next year's team is not that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's part of the reason that I would not be able to get on board with Nico winning the Heisman next year is because I don't know who's helping him do that. So, uh, yeah, you're you're right in terms of the team result. If Tennessee is going to do what the 01 team did or more, then Nico has to be special. And a lot of players on both sides of the ball have to be much improved in 2024. And maybe that happens, but... That 01 team had legit NFL players. Not, uh, maybe they'll get drafted guys. They had, let's go get those guys in the first round kind of talent. Absolutely. Go ahead, Caleb. Yeah, I agree. And so, do you think so? But couldn't part, couldn't one advantage Tennessee has this time compared to the last time? Yes, this team is significantly worse. Not just Nico being better than Casey, but I'm, I'm not trying to throw. Philip Fulmer, Randy Sanders under the bus. They ran a different system altogether. But Nico combined with Josh Heupel, can that outweigh some of the drawbacks? Because that happened two years ago. Hendon Hooker combined with Josh Heupel. The 2022 Tennessee team wasn't anywhere near the 2001 team in talent level, but they finished with the same record. And it was because the combination of Hooker and Heupel just outweighed the combination of, sorry, Casey Clawson and Randy Sanders in 2001. Um. Yeah, I, th- I think it starts there. Heupel and Hooker were a terrific combination with what the system is with some other players too. Jalen Hyatt's a Blitnikoff award winner who is now showing that he belongs in the NFL too. Uh, Darnell Wright was a top 10 pick playing at right tackle. So it, it was more than them, but you're right. Heupel and Hooker are the biggest reason that combination of why Tennessee was able to go win 10 games in the regular season. And pull off a historic combo, uh, a historic win against Alabama, 52 to 49. It took that though. It took that kind of performance and a Jameer Gibbs drop. Like if Jameer Gibbs doesn't drop the football on that final Alabama drive and they win the game, it doesn't change anything about what Tennessee was as a team changes. The result changes how it's historically remembered. So you still had to have some things come together for that magical season to exist the way that it did. And right now, I don't see that roster help for Nico. And the roster is a work in progress. We still have to see how the transfer portal works out. What if Mike Matthews comes in and he is just he is ready to go to make a big impact as a freshman? That's a big ask, but it's on the table in the what-if scenario when we talk about Tennessee trying to repeat what it did in 2022, at the very least, again in 2024. Josh's appearance brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. I want to ask Josh if it's a disappointment if uh, Nico at some point during his career isn't invited to New York for the, the Heisman Trophy ceremony. I'm interested to see what he has to say. Imagine having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. Dynasty Pools and Spas has their showroom open in Athens with the best hot tubs and spas in the market. Delivery Yes, they can do that. So you can check it out, have it delivered there in the Knoxville area or Chattanooga area. Complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best. That's Dynasty Pools and Spas. Amazing discounts for first responders, military, and even some blemish models that can save you a ton. And no one will ever notice Dynasty Pools and Spas. Go to DynastySpas.com or stop by their showroom in Athens, Dynasty Pools and Spas. So if you had a better mortgage payment, does Nico end up at some point during his career? I'm going to lessen a little bit what Caleb said. Does he at least end up at the Heisman ceremony? Is he sitting there in the chair waiting for that ugly trophy to be unveiled? You don't like the trophy? I think it's an ugly trophy. I think it needs a little, a little, I don't know. I just thought it's an ugly trophy. You think it's a good looking trophy? Man, that's the Grand Prix of takes, I feel like. <laughs> it's historic. It's the Grand, um, Grand Prix something, Martin True. So you're asking me, does he end up in New York, at least as a Heisman finalist? At some point in his career, yes. I'll say I'll say yes. 
uh, I'll say in 2025, he blossoms into a Heisman candidate. Winner, I mean, we're talking about Tennessee's first ever winner. It's just difficult to, to get that done. So I'll say, I wouldn't say that. But a trip to New York, uh, I'll gamble on, yes. I think that Nico's talent is for real. And I think his opportunity in this offense is it's as high for his potential as any quarterback we could talk about over the next couple of years. Now I would agree yeah, with that. Hasn't... Go ahead, Sorry. Yeah, Josh, I don't think you've been on here when I said this, but I've said it to a lot of other people. There are certain times in history where like you have a coach with the system and a quarterback that was like designed to run that system. And they're a perfect match made in heaven. I bring up, I tell me if you think I'm crazy for saying this, I bring up like Tommy Frazier landing with Tom Osborne. That was perfect. I bring up Tim Tebow landing with Urban Meyer. Tebow was created in a lab to run Urban Meyer's spread offense. Yeah, I think Nico and Heifel is that combination. I think it's like Nico was created and designed to run this system, wasn't he? He does look like a perfect fit with his quick release, his mobility. Uh, everything that he can do would match with what Josh Heifel asks of his quarterback. There is the fear that he gets hurt, but honestly, that exists for any quarterback that has mobility and will run. So I don't think it's that fair to harp on that. Maybe if he was needed this past season, being a true freshman. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think that he looks like a perfect fit for the offense going in. Some of the names you mentioned were who came to mind immediately for me. Tim Tebow with Urban Meyer. When Cam Newton went to run the offense for Auburn, that was exactly what they needed. He's also special talent. We're talking about special talents, at least at the collegiate level. Uh, I know T Tebow didn't have a great NFL career. That doesn't matter for what he was needed to do in Urban Meyer's offense. I think that Nico has NFL potential. Don't get me wrong there. But with Tennessee's offense and what's required in the game today, he has everything that allowed him to become either the number one quarterback in the country as on three ranked him or one of the top two or three guys, no matter the service in 2023. Uh, somebody asked on the message board before we move on, talk to some Tennessee Cruton next, and that is who will um, uh, Nico's backup be? I'm going to go ahead and tell you for any big time program, it doesn't matter. It really does anymore because the way the transfer, it's probably going to be Jake Merkling or the freshman coming in, I would think. But it doesn't matter because nowadays you're loading up for a quarterback just like in the NFL. If you lose your starting quarterback, that season's probably trashed. I mean, that's just basically. Well, Texas I, is in the playoff and they lost Quinn Ewers for multiple weeks. Well, and their, and their backup quarterback just entered the transfer portal, will not be there in the playoff, Malik Murphy. That's a fair point, but don't you think that's going to be the exception to the rule? Well, sure. I mean, I I think it's the exception anytime you lose your starting quarterback that you're going to have that kind of success. But uh, we've seen backup quarterbacks have to step up and perform. I, you know, Tennessee's history is relying on the backup quarterback. If we're talking about to go win the win a conference title, get to the playoff, compete for a national title, and that's just so hard to do with your starter. So, sure, that can wreck a season. But um, if we're talking about can you still win – nine or 10 games. And again, a 12 team playoff, the idea of getting in is different. Now. I think the backup quarterback is a really important role. I just think the day, I guess my point was, and maybe I didn't can Alabama won a title making a change in the national. Yeah. Title game. Again, yeah, that, but the, yeah. That's an exception for sure. But right. yeah, I think we can go through and find plenty of examples where you at least need the backup for a game or two to hold steady, especially if the goal does change to, Hey, can we get to 10 and two, not 12 and 0 or 11 and one. If, if you have a little wiggle room, uh, but you need to make sure you don't fall apart for a month, the backup becomes important. I guess, I guess my point is, I think the days of having Jeremy Col Colquitt, Peyton Manning, Brandon Stewart, and Todd Helton going four deep at quarterback are probably over. Yeah, you're not going to see that nearly as often. O Ole Miss and Lane, he put together a quarterback room that included a former starter at Oklahoma State who had success and a former five-star recruit in Walker Howard. We'll see how things play out at Oregon, but they've brought in Dylan Gabriel, and, and unless I haven't seen news, there's a chance that Dante Moore goes there to sit for a year and then take over in 2025. That's still the exception, but Tennessee's a program that's going to hold standards like that at, in the quarterback room. Well, but remember this, though. Lane, with all those quarterbacks, he was dating their mothers. So that helped. <laughs> <laughs> so get them in there. <laughs> I was talking to your mom last night, and she said that you should stay at Ole Miss. 
Okay. Well, everybody has a different style in recruiting. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> Lane's style. 